In this video, I'll talk about how I make a video podcast using Reaper. Talk about how we record it, the theme song, the image assets, the editing template, how to export as a video and MP3 simultaneously, all this and more. Let's jump into it. So if you follow me online, you, you know that I've started up the Home Recording Show podcast again. We did over 250 episodes since 2008, took about a five year break, and now we're back with season three, starting on episode 301. We've been doing this as audio and video podcast. The first four episodes, we did this recording into OBS using uh, Video Ninja and capturing just what is coming through the internet to my computer. This unfortunately hasn't been working that well. We've been getting some video issues with that. So from episodes 305, 306 and on, we're recording video sources separately. We're using OBS to do a virtual camera, share that over with Zoom. And the results of this has been really excellent. This is a guest onboarding document that I wrote up but this is the same process and settings that we use for our own setup. We did this last week to make sure that it's right. And so far the results have been excellent, really good quality. I'm able to edit everything in Reaper without any issues. So that's why we're doing a video on this today. The other reason we're doing a video on this today is because this is a sponsored video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, productivity, graphic design, and more. If you'd like to learn a new skill, expand on your existing abilities and skills, or explore your creativity, Skillshare is the place for you. Click the link in the description for a one month free trial of Skillshare premium membership. You get access to every single class, workshop, access to the uh, instructors, and this great community on Skillshare. If you like to learn in a distraction-free environment away from algorithms and ads and things like that, Skillshare is an awesome place to be. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Once everything is recorded, I'll have four files. I'll have my audio and video files plus Ryan's audio and video files. And then I need to make this into a show. So you need various files like what's in my template. I'll need the theme song, I'll need overlays, I'll need graphics, titles, and things like that. I use Pixelmator Pro and I have several documents here. So I'll just start with the OBS template. When we did the first four episodes, we were recording directly into an OBS template. So I had a single video file and then two audio files that I would make the show from, sync them up, just edit it all in a grouped item and um, no manipulation of the video at all. In theory, this would work. Unfortunately, just the bandwidth issues, uh, issues with uh, plugins and things did not make that super reliable. But this is the template I use. We use this in OBS, but now I'm using it in Reaper as an overlay, and I just export this as a PNG with transparency. I drop this in as a layer in Reaper above my two video files. I also made a three camera version of this setup. For the episode thumbnail, I've got this design, and this is also essentially what um, is in the background of the video as well. So you see these lines in the background. Um, my idea for the intro would be to have these lines kind of shifting. So what I actually did was export six different images with slightly different angles for the, those lines, and that became a moving element for the video. So I would export without these other images visible, without the logo and, and such, and just modify the angle. And each time I make a change, I export that as a new PNG file. I also have a, another document for um, overlays of the show supporters. And so I can take that away and I put in the names. And so I've got another overlay that I update for each episode with the names of the supporters. Long story short, I've got a bunch of image overlays and assets that I export and then um, overlay on top of the videos or assemble in Reaper. So when it comes to making the intro video for the podcast, I first laid out the PNG files for the background. So there are six files. Each one of these is a frame long. When it gets to number six, it reverses the order back down to one and then repeats. So this is what that looks like. 
just a little bit of movement there to make it kind of interesting. And then there's going to be the letters for HRS. They come in from the top. And that's just a simple adjustment of the Y envelope um, for the video processor uh, on this item. So the image overlay preset, this is one of the built-in presets. I'm just taking the Y offset and moving that to put that into the correct position. And then I've got this other one with the title or um, subtitle, I guess. And that slides in at the predetermined time. I'm using a, a shallow S curve shape. And so altogether that looks like this. And that goes for a few seconds. And then I've got these items muted here because I have another overlay that comes in for the show supporters. This particular template becomes my outro for the podcast where we have the show supporters and the names listed there. I also have the theme, the project session for the theme. I actually did this as a live stream. I think we had two episodes recorded and then I was kind of in a rush to get the theme song done before the first episode was released. So I did all of this stuff kind of in a day or two. And kind of the point of this was just to get some ideas down, see what works, see what I don't like. And it was fun to have kind of an audience for this. So a link to the full live stream. Basically, this is kind of the final version of that. So this is the first idea I came up with for the theme. And that was too long, kind of the wrong vibe. I don't dislike it, but I don't think it was right. So then I was just thinking, I, I need something more upbeat. Let's just quickly put in sort of a, a punk style. And again, I don't dislike it, but it's a bit too long. It didn't quite work. And then I was just kind of jamming on some other ideas and ended up uh, with this one here. And again, that one wasn't working. I came back a couple of days later and listened to the punk one again and realized that I just need to make a shorter version of it. I needed um, a better buildup into that and then a sustained part. So here is the actual uh, theme that I ended up with. So I had all the parts there from the original, maybe two, three minute recording that was done live. It was just a matter of mixing it differently. You know, it's very simple and I didn't need to overthink it. It works with the images. It works with getting everyone excited for the show. And so uh, I just exported that as a WAV file. And now we're in my actual video editing template. And so this brings in all the image assets and audio that we've seen so far, the intro video just as a video file, and I've got the audio, the theme song on a separate track below. I added in a fade out to this video so that we can transition into the show a little bit quicker. The whole thing is a little bit long still, I feel, over 20 seconds, that's okay. No one's complained about that yet. Um, ideally like five, six seconds would have been better, but I have to work with the, uh, 
structure of the music. So once we've got the show coming in, the video item has the preset item fades effect video, and that just changes the opacity of that. And then we've got our image overlay added in there for the actual kind of show template. Name of the show and then our two video windows. I think a two host show recorded remotely works well in this sort of layout. And I don't need to constantly uh, cut between different cameras for based on who's talking. Um, but I, I could if I wanted to very easily, I can make each one full screen, but I think this works well. You can see that there's two takes in this item. So if I switch the takes to this other one, I've got my three video layout. And so we could have screen capture on the third window or we could have a guest. This orange item is our name plates added in there. That's got a fade in and a fade out of the specific length of time. And uh, that just lives in that position. At the end of the show, I've got a section for the outro where I've got the video file and I have the audio embedded here in the same item just because it doesn't need any additional volume changes or anything. And then I've got the image overlay for the show supporters. And then per episode, I'm just changing this orange item uh, to change the names. So the actual layout of tracks, I've got a folder for video. Inside there's an overlays track, the intro video track, the template overlay, my video, Ryan's video, and then a guest, if we have a guest. For voices, I have a folder, which is processing with the Tone Boosters de and the RX-7 mouth de-click. Then we've got my voice track, which has some processing, denoise, a gate, compressor, and a limiter. And these get adjusted per episode, but that's kind of the template. And Ryan's setup is the same. I think he's got a little bit more denoising. And then the guest will have the same preset um, starting point adjusted for their voice. And in an episode where I'm not working with a guest, I can just hide these tracks just like that. And that cleans up the session a little bit. And then I've got the intro music. And this is not in the voice folder, so it doesn't go through the de and the mouth de-click. This track does have a compressor. Uh, just there's a little bit at the be at the intro where, where we're talking. And it's basically just in this fade out section. We want this to duck under the voices as well. On the master track, I've got a brick wall limiter set to minus 1.1 dB. And, um, and then metering. I use an extension from Heda called Loudness Graph. I just drop that in there. And this is a LUFS meter with graph. So I'll just play some of the intro. And you can see this top red line is minus 14 LUFS. And this green line is minus 23 LUFS. And I always keep the dialogue in between the red and the green lines, never above, never below, or very rarely uh, when appropriate. That's how I manage the loudness of the show. I'll just import the media for episode five so you can see what that looks like. So I've got Ryan's audio here. I'll drop that in on that track. I've got my audio and I'll drop that in. I'll take Ryan's video and put that on the Ryan video track. And then I'll take my video and put that on my video track. Because the audio and video are actually recorded separately, we do need to spend some time syncing, which is fine. I can see here, I'm just about to do the clap. There's my sync point. I can grab this item and then snap that to there, zoom in and yeah, as long as it's within one frame, I'm good. So there's me. Safety, so Ryan's. My video and audio are lined up. And then Ryan's clap is right here. And so I'll grab it. I just look for the, the spike in the waveform. I don't look for the waveform in the video file. I look for it in the audio file. And so clean that audio. looks right. 
So I'm going to take Ryan's items, group those together. Then I can take the intro, truncate it like that. And I find where we've actually introduced the show and Ryan says hello. And a good place to look for it is something like this. I'm going to turn off the grid just temporarily so you can see this a little bit better. I'll increase the waveform height. So if I'm saying something like this here, calls involved with working on these large films and stuff. So I say something to Ryan and then Ryan responds and I just line that up to be right there on these, on these large, large films, films and stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so obviously, obviously the... And then I just make sure that there's no audio coming through the video tracks. So I just click source properties and then ignore audio. And I'll do that even with this one that has no audio file in it, just to make sure working on these large films and stuff. Yeah. So obviously the big thing right now is COVID. Um, it's constant testing. Uh, we have, we're divided. In Once these are all lined up, I can select them all, group them. G is the default for group. You can also go to the group function in the right click menu and they are synced. So if I make an edit anywhere, if I press S, that will make a split. If I put my cursor somewhere and then press A, that will trim the start, the last edit over to where the edit cursor is. That actual action is, it's a custom trim action. Uh, trim items left of cursor, move cursor to start of items and go to edit cursor. You could just have that as trim start to cursor um, and basically be the same. It's a slight difference of kind of how Reaper will scroll and things like that. Majority of the editing is done in ripple edit mode and I'm just trimming junk that I don't need in this sort of workflow. And I do it based on the audio mostly. And because it's a video podcast, you can kind of get away with a little less audio editing. Just if you see something on screen, you can leave it in kind of. If it was audio only, you'd probably edit a little bit tighter. But I think, um, yeah, I'm just kind of going for a natural balance between the audio and video versions of the podcast. So jumping ahead to um, when this podcast is done editing, um, we will make sure that the audio starts at the correct time, which would be right here. Welcome back to The Home Recording Show. This is episode 305. And today we're gonna to talk about onset safety. So Ryan's an expert. So there's the intro and then the outro. I'll just trim this, say that's the end ending, bring that in. You wanna make sure you're in it. Snap to grid here. So that's the end. And then I bring over my outro section. Mics overhead in ways. Not going to go through the entire edit because that will take me probably an hour and a half or so. We want to make this video short and packed with information as possible. So now we're in the rendered file window. I have a preset saved for previous episodes of the podcast. So HRS podcast under all settings. And so this is going to be master mix, entire project, file name, episode 305. Actually, what I should do is HRS.305, which is what the, pot, the MP3 will be named. And that's what goes onto the server. Doing 44.1 because of the format that we want for the uh, MP3 makes the file size a little bit smaller for the MP3. But I do do a 320 kilobit per second MP3. And we do export as stereo because there's stereo music in the intro and sometimes we have uh, musical examples throughout that we want to keep stereo. MP3 constant bit rate 320 for primary output format. And under secondary, it's MPEG-4. Streaming optimized, 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS, H.264, 5,000 kilobits per second, slightly lower bit rate, but because this is only 1080p and because the actual moving parts of this are kind of smaller, I've decided that that's a good uh, compromise of this the file size. And then 320 AAC for the audio codec there. Before we render, I have to make sure that metadata is enabled and going to metadata and then 
under presets, HRS podcast, put in the name of the show. So this will be onset safety. This will also be onset safety. Artist, home recording show, date, 2022, genre, podcast. Under the track number, this will be episode 305. And then we can hit OK. And so when this exports the two files, it will add that metadata into the MP3 for me. A lot of things done here in this final stage that saves a lot of time. I don't need to export a video separate from the audio version. I don't need to export the MP3 and then add metadata in a separate stage like I used to do. A lot of things are consolidated into a few steps there. And that's where we're going to leave this one here today. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking through this long video. I wanted to get every kind of detail in there um, because you know, this stuff is exciting for me. I've done podcasting since 2008. And this is the first year we're doing it with video. You know, there's all these things that have gone wrong in the previous episodes that we're finally like getting right. And, and I'm excited about how this episode looks. And there's so many great things in Reaper that make this uh, really manageable um, on modest setups like the M1 Mac Mini. You know, you don't need a crazy fast computer. You don't need a super high-end camera. You don't have to do a dedicated video editor with this subscription service uh, to pay for it. There's a lot you can do just with Reaper. So if you're interested in the show, there'll be a link to the description. Don't forget to check out the sponsor. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.